Hey guys, this is Megan with Left and Knots, and today I am going to walk you through how to master the corner to corner crochet stitch as as well as all the techniques you'll need to know to make a corner to corner blanket using a pixel chart or a pixel graph so that you can make some blankets like these you see here. So the blankets you just saw include some patterns that are on my website. My very first corner-to-corner -corner project was the Arrows blanket, um, and then I'm also release releasing some seasonal vintage truck blankets. I've got two out now and two more are coming um, at the time I'm filming this, and I will add the links to all of those blankets and projects below so that you can find them after you take this tutorial. This video is going to cover starting a corner to corner project in the basic stitch. It's going to cover increase rows. It's going to col cover color changes. It's going to cover what I call maintaining rows for making a rectangular piece like those blankets you saw. It will talk about decreasing rows and how to finish your project, how to finish along the edge of your project. If you want to watch this video from start to finish, if you are a corner to corner beginner, I recommend you do so. I've got this sample graph that you're going to follow along with me. So you can just find two colors of worsted weight yarn or whatever yarn you want to work with and a an appropriately sized crochet hook. If you just want to learn a certain technique like color changes or making a rectangular shape, in the next frame I am going to break down the time sections that you can advance to within this video to see the section that you want to watch so that you don't have to watch all the way through or try to find that specific spot that you're looking for. Um, so right now I'm going to show you those. So again, those are the timestamps. That's where you should advance to in the video if you want to advance to a certain technique that you're maybe looking for a little bit of help with. To begin, like I said, we've got two colors of yarn and our sample chart here. This is an arbitrary shape design um, you can really do whatever you want. This is just to cover all those different techniques that I had talked about um, that we're going to cover in this tutorial. So from my two skeins of yarn, I've actually divided these up into separate little balls of yarn. Um, some people call these bobbins, and some people, instead of just doing balls of yarn, will wrap their yarn around plastic pieces, or I've seen bobby pin, or not bobby pins, um, clothes pins. If that works for you, go ahead. I usually just stick to balls of yarn. Um, and then I always keep a skein to pull more from should there be more color changes that pop up in the pattern that I'm working on. To start this corner to corner project, we're going to start in the lower right hand corner. Um, that is pretty typical of corner to corner projects. It doesn't really matter as long as you're following the chart, but that's how, that's the direction I'm going to go. And then we're going to go in a serpentine pattern, which means we're going to go back and forth, kind of zigzag from corner to corner across the whole chart. So we're going to look at this chart and we can see that my first one I'm going to mark them. One, two, three, four. My first five rows are just those white squares, which for that I'm using this gray yarn. So I'm going to show you the first five rows, and this will be where we 
cover starting the corner to corner stitch and then also increase rows. To begin, I've got one ball of yarn. You can see my others over here. I'm going to start with a basic slip knot, how you would start any other crochet project. And I'm going to start with chaining five. Right here I will mention some corner to corner projects use half double crochet, some use double crochet. Um, I even have a pattern that uses triple crochet. So these, these chains may change. Just look at your pattern and see what the pattern indicates. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating a double crochet corner to corner and for that I personally say or I personally start with a chain five. So I'm on three, four, five. Now for your very first box of the corner to corner stitches you're going to skip your first two chain stitches and double crochet in the third stitch. I zoomed it in a little closer there so that you can see what I'm doing a bit better. So I'm double crocheting in that third stitch or that third chain from my hook. And there's your first stitch. Now I've got two remaining chains to work into and I'm going to double crochet in those as well. So three double crochet stitches in a row make one of the squares or boxes that you see on that pixel chart. So that is row one. I'm going to go back to my gra or back to my chart and actually mark my paper. I just crocheted row one. Now moving on to row two, I'm going to chain five again. One, two, three, four, and five. This is what I'm calling an increase row. So you start your row by chaining five. And then you just do the exact same thing you just did. You skip those first two chain stitches and double crochet in the remaining three. So that's your first box of your second row, your first square. Now this is where you just rotate it a little bit. This was your first square. This is the first this is the first square or your only square of row 1. This is the first square of row 2. Find those two chain stitches that you skipped for your first square. I'm going to flip that up and you're going to insert your hook into that chain two space and slip stitch into that space. Now you're going to work three double crochets in that chain two space. So you're going to chain two, just like starting a new row if you were working a project in rows. And you're going to work three double crochet in that space. So then there you can see you've completed row two. So 
So again, here is the chart that I'm following. I completed row two. We're going in a serpentine pattern. I always draw an arrow to indicate the direction that I've been traveling. Um, that won't really be significant until we start adding additional colors to our project. But we'll just say we did row two in the right to left direction. So now we're moving on to row three. Row three starts the exact same way with the chain five. Again, this is an increasing row. Here are my chain stitches. I skip those first two, work into the final three. So there's my first square of row three. Again, I'm going to locate that chain two space on the last square of my second row, which is right here. I'm going to flip this up. And then I'm going to insert my hook into that chain two space, slip stitch and pull tight. And now I'm ready to work. We'll do a, start with the chain two and then do three double crochet into that chain two space. Now this row has one more square to finish the increase row. So again, this is that chain two space. This time you don't need to rotate because you already did. Um, so you'll just slip stitch right into that chain two space. Chain two. Three double crochet. And that is your third row. So here on my chart, I'm going to mark my third row. This one I worked left to right. If I'm following along with just a chart like this, I like to mark every row down because color changes are a lot easier to catch. Um, mistakes in color changes are a lot easier to catch as you're going, as opposed to tearing out a bunch of rows after you realize you made a mistake. So I always like to mark each row off as I go. So we have two more rows of just this solid color before we start color changes. So if you want to skip ahead to the next section, you can go ahead and do that. And this screen, next screen will show you what time to jump to. Or if you would like to continue watching these next two rows, if you're crocheting along with me, um, please feel free to do that as well. So again, we start with a chain five for increase. We skip the first two chain stitches, three double crochet in the remaining three chain stitches. And this is where we rotate the piece again. That's the first square of row four. This is the last square of row three. So this is the chain two space that I'm going to work into. I flip to rotate that up. And I slip stitch 
into that chain two space. Chain two. Work three double crochet into that space. Slip stitch into your next chain two space. Chain two, three double crochet. Now you slip stitch into that final chain two space, chain two, and finish with your final three double crochet stitches for row four. So now you can see we're at the end of row four. I'm going to go ahead and mark that on my chart. Now we'll move on to row five, our final increase row without color changes. So now we're going to chain five, skip those first two chain stitches, and double crochet in the remaining three chain stitches. first square of row five, final square of row four. This is our chain two space we want to work into. Flip it up and slip stitch, pull tight. Chain two and three double crochet. Slip stitch into this next space. Chain two, three double crochet, and continue that all the way across row five. And there's our final chain two space to work into. And there you've got five rows of increase corner to corner crochet. We'll mark off row number five. And now for row six, we see that we've got our first color change. So we're going to start this row with one, two, three of our gray. Sometimes if I'm pre-counting, I just write a little three for myself. One blue, and then finish it with two gray. You don't have to write those numbers down, but sometimes I like to pre-count my numbers and then as I'm crocheting, I just do a quick look back at my chart um, so that I know how many of each color I'm going to be doing. Um, with some of the more intricate blankets, it, it ends up being a lot to keep track of and a lot to keep counting over and over. 
So that's just a little trick that I like to do to help with that. I will no longer be um, verbally walking you through each of these stitches and where to um, connect with your slip stitches across the row. If you need more practice with that, just rewatch the previous section um, with just the starting and increase rows. Um, this is going to officially be the color change section, um, and that's those are the techniques that we're really going to focus on and talk about in this section. So I'm going to do my three squares of gray to start with in this row. So this is my third square of gray. And this is my last square before we change colors. So before I completely finish this square, I'm going to get to that last, the third double crochet stitch. I'll do this part more slowly so you can see. So I've got one, two double crochet stitches here. And this is the, like I said, my last gray square before my color change to blue. I'm going to crochet my final double crochet stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now I'm going to grab one of my little blue balls of yarn that I've pre-wound from my skein. I'm going to leave a tail because we want to be able to weave it in at the end of our project. And I'm going to place that over my hook and pull the blue through those final two loops of that double crochet stitch. This will give you a nice clean looking color change. And so with the blue is where you're going to slip stitch into this next chain two space. So you can see I've switched fully to the blue now. I'm going to chain two and continue on. If you're following along in the chart, you'll know that this is the only blue stitch of this row. So there's my first two double crochet. I'm going to start my third double crochet with yarn over, insert my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and now I'm going to grab, so you can see this is where it can get messy. Um, I've got one, two balls of yarn. I'm going to grab a third. And I'm going to use the same technique. I'm going to leave a long tail so that I have an end to weave in. I'm going to place that gray over my hook and pull it through those last two loops of that blue double crochet stitch. Just pull everything tight and Finish your row with those final two gray squares. So here you can see that very first glimpse at a color change. You can see how nice and neat we made it. So this is the end of our sixth row and we've got that one blue square now.
We'll mark that off on our chart. Again, I'm going to pre-count my squares for the next row. So that's one, two, white, one, two, blue, and one, two, three, or gray, I guess, not white. So now we've got two gray, two blue, and three gray. Now that you've got these multiple bobbins, um, you will have to <laughs> decide what kind of corner-to-corner -cro -corner crocheter you are. Um, some people really like to get fancy in the way that they organize their bobbins. Um, some people like to detangle them at the end of each row. I am a, what I will call, messy corner-to-corner -corner crocheter. Not that my crochet piece is messy, but I just kind of let these tangle up a little bit and I, I untangle them every few rows. Um, it does not slow me down. And so just in the interest of time, I do not untangle every single row. But you do what you are comfortable with and what works the best for you. So we're still working increase rows with these color changes. So again, based on our chart, I was starting with two gray squares. So here's one, this is number two. I'm going to be working on my third double crochet stitch, yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now I'm not adding a new bobbin this time, I'm just using my working yarn from this blue I already used in my previous row. But again, I'm just going to put this blue over my hook, pull it through those two final loops for that half or for that double crochet stitch, and then just leave some slack because you're going to crochet over this blue here that spans this next chain two space. So I'm going to slip stitch again with that blue that I switched to and now I'll chain two and double crochet in that chain two space over this blue that I left when I changed colors. And that will camouflage and blend in just fine because you're using that exact same color. It's just kind of like you're carrying that blue one stitch over. Um, you can carry other colors, um, but if it's not the color that you're currently working with, sometimes it'll show up in between your stitches. So I don't, I don't generally do that with my pieces, but that is an option. Um, if you don't want quite as many tails to weave in. So now I've just completed my second square of blue for this row, which is where I change back to gray again. I've left those last two loops on the hook. Find my gray. This time my color change, I don't need to pull it across any other stitches. I just need to yarn over with the gray, pull through those two loops, and then use the gray to slip stitch into that next chain two space. And then finish my row.
So there is the end of row seven. This project's getting bigger. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. So when we go back to our chart, again, I just completed row seven. Moving on to row eight, I've got one, two, three gray, one, two, three blue, and one, two, gray. If you feel like you would like to skip on to the next section, you may go ahead. I will put that timestamp that you want to skip to in the next frame where we talk about um, switching from increase rows to maintaining rows to make rectangular shapes. Um, I'm going to do demonstrate one more row of color changes um, and then I will skip ahead to that point as well. So if you want to watch one more row of color changes just to get a little bit more practice with me, go ahead. If you want to skip ahead to maintaining rows, here is the timestamp that you will want to skip to right here. So here is the final row I'm going to demonstrate for color changes and then I'm going to work ahead just a little bit. Um, you can pause this video and work up until the maintaining rows portion of our chart. So again, for this eighth row, we've got three gray, This is the last double crochet stitch of my third gray square. These are the last two loops on my hook. This is where I'm going to grab my working yarn with the blue. And again, this time I'm going to kind of pull it across this chain two space here. Yarn over, pull through those two loops. Pull everything tight and then use the blue to slip stitch into that space where you will work now in this chain two space and work over your blue yarn. There's the first two cro double crochets of my final blue square. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. I've got my final two loops on that last double crochet stitch, switching back to gray. I take that gray, yarn over, pull through those two loops, 
and slip stitch into that next chain two space. Finish off this row with two more gray squares. Now this is the end of row eight. So we're going to look at our chart. We came right to left for row eight. Now we're going to have two more rows where we are crocheting increase rows. We're going to crochet row nine and 10 as increase rows. You'll notice 10, you'll have another extra color change right in there. Um, so I will come back right around this area of row 10 to show you um, working in that new color change there and then how we're going to switch from increase rows where we increase the stitch count on both sides um, to crocheting maintaining rows where we are making a rectangular shape instead of a square. If you continued to do increasing rows and then decreasing rows, you would make a square shape. Um, by crocheting maintaining rows, you're going to make this rectangular like so many um, corner to corner blankets you see. So. Right now would be a good time to pause if you are crocheting along with me and continue this project up until about the middle of row 10. And I'm going to come back after these um, couple of blue squares right at this color change here where we hit that um, white square again in the middle. All right, so we are back now at row 10 and I've crocheted the first three gray squares and one of the blue squares. I need one more blue square before I switch to that new color in the middle of this rectangle. So this is that second blue square I'm working on. This will show you that color change technique one more time from a new bobbin or a new ball of yarn. So there are my first two double crochets. And my third almost finished. I've got another ball of yarn. We're getting quite a few now. Again, you want to leave a tail, put the yarn over the hook, pull it through those two loops, and then use that gray or whatever color you're using to slip stitch into your next chain two space. And then now you're going to work that next square. Finish leaving those last two loops on your hook and you're going to add another bobbin or ball of yarn to switch back to blue. You're going to leave that long tail yarn over your hook, pull through those loops, So you can see now it's starting with these multiple color changes in each row. You're starting to have more to work with. It's starting to maybe get a little bit messy. So again, this is where you need to decide what level of yarn tangle is comfortable for you. If you don't like any tangle at all, you will want to just flip your project carefully and untangle after each row. If you can deal with the tangle, you can let it go for a little bit like I do. Um, that is totally a personal preference and your choice to make. It's not going to affect the outcome of your crochet project. There's my last blue. 
switching back to silver or to this gray and this one I already had attached as working yarn. So we're going to switch to gray one more time. Finish up that row and now we are moving on to the portion that I'm calling maintaining rows. And I call it maintaining rows because I'll show you the chart in a minute here. Okay. So we just finished row 10. Again, really important to track as you go along with your project. Row 11 is our first maintaining row. And I call it maintaining rows because on these increase rows, I don't know if you noticed, but on row one, you made one square. On row two, you had two squares, three had three squares, etc., etc. So by row 10, you have 10 squares going across diagonally. Now for row 11, you are also going to have 10 squares going across, and that's what allows you to make this rectangular shape instead of if you were to make cut it off here and make a square shape with your project. So for maintaining rows, we're increasing on one side and decreasing on the other. So you can see here at the end of row 10, I'm still increasing in this direction for a few more rows. But when I get to the end of row 11, I'm going to decrease. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. But the important thing to understand is that we're for these maintaining rows, we are maintaining that count in this example of 10 squares across. And it will remain 10 squares across until we start our decrease rows. So right now we're making the second corner of our project. And that's going to be that corner right up there. So we've got this is our first corner. This is the second corner that we'll make up here. So like last time, I'm not really going to walk you through the color changes anymore. I am going to crochet along and walk you through verbally the new section, which is the maintaining rows for re creating a rectangle. If you feel like you need to review more color change technique, please um, skip back to the beginning of that section and just practice a little bit. Because now we'll just be talking about maintaining rows. So again, as I showed you on the chart, row 11 starts with an increase. If the were rectangle, rectangle were going the other direction, if it was taller than it was wide, um, it would be flip-flop. We'd start with a decrease and end with an increase on this row. But since this is a wide rectangle, we're starting with an increase and ending with a decrease. And I hope this will make sense once I show you. So here's our increase that we're starting with to make that wide rectangle. All right, now I'm switching to that final section of gray. And look at your chart. There's only two squares of gray left in this row to make our total of 10 squares. So this is where the decreasing part comes in. I've got one square. And this will be our last square. Okay, so now instead of making another square in this final chain two space, we are still going to slip stitch into that space. 
but instead of crocheting another square, we're just going to chain one, turn your project. So this is that second corner now. So you chained one, you turned your project, and then here you can see one, two, three stitches you're going to slip stitch in each one of those stitches loosely across. One, two, three. And then I like to slip stitch into this chain two space. I'm going to set this down again so you can see. So this is where we slip stitched across and I slip stitched into this chain two space and now I'm ready to work row 12 across in this direction. So going back to our chart, we finished row 11 and now we're starting row 12. So we did that decrease. We're starting row 12. All the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and start crocheting across. Um, I'll come back at the end of row 12 and walk you through um, the increase on that next side. So right now would be a good time to pause your video if you're crocheting along with me and I will be back uh, near the end of row 12. All right, here we are back at the end of row 12. Um, again, this is where we turned that corner, did our made our decrease, and now I've made nine squares across. At the end of row 12 is where we increase at the end of our row to maintain that 10 square count going across. So we crochet one more there. That's our 10th square going across and now for the Final time, starting with row thir um, starting row thirteen, we start with a chain five. All right, here are our final squares of our last maintaining row. Since we increased at the beginning of this row, we're going to decrease at the end of it. So this will be our 10th and final square of row 13. So again, to decrease, you're going to slip stitch into this chain two space, chain one, turn your piece, and again, you're going to slip stitch one, two, three times across. And then I slip stitch one more time into that chain two space where I'm going to work the first square of my next row. So we're going to start our next square right here.
Going back to our chart, um, we finished 12, we finished 13, and now we're on to 14. And now 14, you can see 13, we made that third corner of our project. And so now you can see we're on decreasing rows. We're decreasing in this direction and in this direction to get to that final corner. We can remove, leaving a long tail, we can remove this yarn here, that center gray. And you can also, this is the blue that I'm going to work with. So you can see I'm starting here. So this is the blue that I'm going to work with all the way across. And so we also will not need the second blue strand of yarn because we can just continue with this one all the way across. So you can cut that one off, leaving a tail to weave in. So working across, now I'm going to have a decrease on both sides of row 14. And so we will have a total of, or, um, we had 10, so we're going to have a total of nine squares across. So you can see I ran out of yarn here with my blue. I'm just going to do add yarn the same way I add it. Um, if I'm changing colors, I leave two loops on my hook, grab a new strand, except this time it's in the same color, leave a tail for weaving in, pull through, and just continue working. It's pretty impossible to guess exactly how much yarn you're going to need for each color change section so that running out kind of midway is inevitable, unless you're better at estimating than I am. Um, it's nice to not have too many of those because every time you do, you have an extra tail to weave in. But like I said, it's, it's pretty inevitable. So expect to see that throughout your project. All right, we're getting to the end of row 14 here, and this is where we're going to see that third corner form. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. This will be our ninth and final square for this row. And this will form that third corner. Okay. 
So then you'll slip stitch into that chain two space, chain one, turn your project, and this final time I'll show you this part, one, two, three stitches that you'll slip stitch across. One, two, three, and then slip stitch and pull tight in that chain two space. So from here on out, your project will only be made of decreasing rows. I'm not going to continue to show them to you. Um, if you want to rewatch those decreases, you can sure go back and do that. Um, but these are easier to keep track of than the maintaining rows because you're you're never at this point going to start a row with a five with a chain five ever again. You're just going to do that slip stitch across. Um, and decrease all the way to that last corner. So I'm going to stop the video for now, finish this piece all the way down to that last corner. Um, if you are following along with me, I encourage you to pause the video and do the same, and then come back so that I can show you how to finish by crocheting a row of single crochet um, evenly around the edge of a corner to corner piece. All right, so we just finished this rectangular piece. My last square ended here. And now I'm just going to show you how to crochet, single crochet around the edge to give it a nice clean look. I always use the same color that I ended with, um, if possible, just to kind of hide those stitches. And then if you wanted to add like an accent color on the border, um, I would crochet it after you do one round of single crochet stitches in your first color. So I'm going to go exactly where I left off from my corner to corner stitches, and I'm going to chain one. You can see here, this is a chain two space. I'm going to work two single crochet stitches into that space. Now this next square, I actually have the tops of stitches to work into. So I'm going to work one, get that a little closer. One, two, three stitches across the next square. which brings me to another chain two space. I'm going to go one, two more stitches in there. You can do three if, if you find that to be um, a better number for you. I just, that's the correct number of stitches for me and my tension so that I get a nice straight edge without the fabric getting kind of wavy from having too many stitches. And then again, one, two, three across this next square. And I continue in that pattern all the way around the piece, working about five single crochet stitches for every two squares of corner to corner. So I'm getting up to a corner here. In each corner, I chain two 
to turn the corner and then just continue working along that side. Now this side doesn't really have those obvious chain two sta um, spaces, but it does have the post of this stitch to work into. So I'll, I'll do the same pattern. I'll go three across here and then two single crochet kind of around this post and continue that pattern along this edge. You can see that chain two space in the corner just makes a nice, nice turn for the corner of your piece. I'm going to finish up this edging. Um, if you're following along, you can pause and do the same, and then I'm going to come back, wrap things up, and show you the finished product. All right, as you can see here, we are finished now with our rectangular corner to corner piece. You can see how nicely the um, Single crochet around the edge really cleans it up and gives it a finished look. So that's what I always like to start with. And then, like I said, if you wanted to add an accent color, now would be the time to switch after you have that nice clean starting edge to work with. The last step would obviously be weaving in all these ends. Um, and I ended by slip stitching to the beginning of my single crochet border. And so there's this tail as well. And that is it. Um, if you like my work and like my tutorials, I would so appreciate if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, YouTube channel, as well as my cro free crochet email newsletter, where I will update you on future free patterns on my blog. I have over 100 free patterns at www.leftandknots.com. I have two of my seasonal vintage truck patterns already released at the time of this video, and I will have two more coming. One will be a crochet along. So again, if you want to stay up to date with those announcements, check out my other patterns. I would really appreciate if you would subscribe with the links below. And I hope that you feel a little bit more confident in your corner to corner crochet skills, and that you will use this technique um, going into the future. Thank you very much. Have a great day.